Hey everyone, welcome back to automation. So it's been a while since my last automation video and uh, it's actually been a couple of weeks since my last video. I'll explain why that's happened in a bit, but I just wanted to mention a few things today. First of all, if you're interested in the car that you're seeing now, this car and more like it are on my Discord. Community creations in the car display tab, that's where these things come from. So if you want to get your car featured in a video, post it there and I may put it here. And number two is Bugo stickers are still available. Grab one now just in time for the holidays. Uh, actually, it's really early for that. Just in time for Halloween uh, to surprise your significant other with something red, small, and scary. Okay, sounds good. So I've been playing a lot of Shadow of War because I've been sick the past week. And then before that, I've been busy. Uh, and that's why there haven't been videos. My voice is still a little bit rough, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of obsessed with Shadow of War, and that gave me the idea to make a war wagon. Now, the game has no vehicles unless you count trebuchets as vehicles, but uh, yeah, that, that's where this inspiration is coming from. Now, when I say war wagon, I mean that in a literal sense. I want to make a wagon that looks like it could survive in war. Uh, this is not talking about a train or anything of that nature. Instead, we're going to be arming up a 1965 wagon to look military enough. Oh yes, it's a bit of a boat, and that is by design. No, it will not be amphibious, though. We're not going there this time. All right, steel, oh, ladder, steel, and a longitudinal engine in the front. Let's put, well, it's going to end up being tall, so if we do double leaf, then, uh, yeah, she's gonna be raised. <laughs> Maybe coils in the front might be better, but leafs in the back for sure. Now, I need to make a new engine for this. Uh, it's gonna be rear wheel drive because I feel like that makes the most sense. And classics, obviously, a cast, push rod, V8, all cast. <laughs> and uh, large capacity is probably better. They don't seem to care too much about fuel efficiency in the army. Just my perception of things. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be an 8.8 .8 liter, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, in 1970, I don't expect this to make a lot of horsepower, but it doesn't really matter. We just need it to be reliable. It doesn't have to be fast. It just has to be uh, bulletproof, L literally. Cast components on the inside, maybe heavy duty cast uh, just for fun. <laughs> we'll see what else we can do. Compression, that's where it is. No turbos allowed, apparently. Single two-barrel carb with a standard intake and uh, low-quality leaded fuel, whatever they can get off the tankers in... Uh, wait, no, 1970, what is that? Man, I don't know enough about war history. 1970, is that Cold War? Am I way off? Ah, uh, good gravy. She's uh, knocking pretty bad. <laughs> We're gonna have to turn down this RPM. 25 horsepower, lovely, but uh, unfortunately, 103 octane required and we're only putting out 85, not good enough. Okay, that's a little bit better, 227 horsepower. All of this is just because of our uh, uh, significant gains in the RPM department that we don't necessarily need. Get that down, full reliability please, turn that engine down in order to make it more reliable. That's exactly what I wanna see. In order to do that, I had to give it extremely low compression, but uh, it was worth it. So with some minor tweaks, I've managed to get it up to 237.4 horsepower, and it is limited on purpose to 3,800 RPMs. Uh, this is a very military thing to do, just limit the power. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to leave it right there. Low quality fuel, keep that in mind, 270 horsepower. I guess this would be going into the fuel crisis in 1970. Uh, I think that's pretty much okay. So let's go with that. And I thought about painting the engine, and then I realized that there's no budget for that. So it's just going to be classic overhead cam. I guess we could do basic, but classic looks cooler. That's good enough. Oh yes, she's going to be tall, and uh, that is by design at this point. The wheels are way too small. We're going to have to make those a lot bigger. They'll fill in the fenders a little bit nicer as well. Uh, but yes, this is looking good. <laughs> So as I sit here drinking some tea, I was just thinking about the paint, and uh, I have some ideas. Um, <laughs> black is the answer for this one. It's got to be black. But uh, what kind of shade of black? It could be matte black. It could just be plastic paint, like plastic dipped style. I mean, that would be a more modern take, perhaps, but I am trying to replicate an old style, so I feel like this is the right way to go. 
So that's what I'm gonna do, just black. So we have the option to make it longer, but I feel like that just makes it look like a hearse, so I'm actually gonna shorten it. Uh, we could go for wide fenders, and that would be cool. Uh, we could go for tank tracks as well, that would also be cool, <laughs> but uh, I don't have the patience for that at the moment. Um, shrinking and making the front end longer, I feel like shorter is better in this case and uh, more of a point in the center, yes please. All right, with some subtle tweaks, just slightly wider fenders is what I was going for there, just something to make it look a little bit beefier, uh, because yes, that is very important. But what I wanna do is, I'm actually gonna skip directly past the uh, uh, components now, the fixtures, and we're gonna be moving on to the rest of things. Um, and try to be thematic as possible. Auto 3 speed, apparently it's thinking 224. I don't know about that. <laughs> I suspect that this is gonna weigh a lot when we get done with the wheels. Now these cars classically would more than likely be open diff, but I'm actually gonna give it a locker, just because I feel like a locker makes it a little bit more drivable off-road, and theoretically this will end up going off-road. <laughs> it is tall for a reason. Radials, chunky off-road, that's all we get in this game. Uh, and then, boy, do we get some width. That's exactly what I want. Tire diameter, give me the chonk, please. 720, is that all I can do? I hope I can do more if I shrink these. Well, Mad Max represent the war wagon is here. I guess that's as big as it'll go uh, if we up the quality. Still can't get anything better, so <laughs> this is going to be a strange one. But that'll have to do it. <laughs> I guess that's the stance I'm going for. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a little bit, done a few tweaks just to get the suspension in the right place, and this is where we've ended up. You can see that lovely 8.8 .8 liter V8 hanging out underneath, and uh, yeah, a lot of goodness as well to come. So this is where I admit to you that I'm absolutely horrible at designing cars from this era. Uh, this one came with a bumper, so it's just gonna probably end up keeping that bumper on the front and the back, which is a good thing, because uh, I have trouble with those. Uh, but let's get the rest of it in while I'm thinking about it because we do need to get some basics in before we start going crazy. Now we could go full on Mad Max and just stick some pipes out of the hood and that would be fun if this was a mud truck, <laughs> but it's not. So uh, I'm not gonna be doing that, much to your disappointment, I'm sure. Does that look aggressive enough? <laughs> we got some big pipes coming out the back. Uh, I might change them still, but I'm kinda happy with that so far. They might be a little bit too big, actually. <laughs> I don't know, I like big exhaust pipes. I'm a bit of a tuner. <laughs> just, just don't worry about it. So the reason that I haven't been making automation videos is really just because I needed a break. <laughs> I know, it seems odd, but uh, I've got a lot of time in this game, and trying to be creative for every video is jet legitimately difficult sometimes, and it's good to just stop for a bit, in this case, a month and a bit and just reflect on things and come back to it, and that's what I've done. I was I was feeling very overwhelmed, and uh, it was good to take a break. I think it was important, but I feel like it's okay to come back a little bit early. I know the turbo update is not out yet, but uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so hopefully you're all right with that. Okay, so I went and slapped together a bit of a template for us, just something simple to work off of, and that's... Uh, yeah, that's exactly what this is. <laughs> Basically, we have built-in bumper, fancy uh, plastic grill. Doesn't make much sense for the era. That would definitely be chrome, but don't worry about it. Uh, wipers and mirrors and door handles, and there's a gas cap on this side. And then we also have some tail lights. And uh, yeah, it looks a little bit modern on the back, perhaps. But that's okay, because I intend to disguise most of this with weirdness. Let's go ahead and add the uh, war treatment to it. See what I can come up with here. Now, one of the good things about this game is that there's a lot of random extras that we can use to make things more interesting. Uh, and by that, I mean there are just a ton of random pieces of crap that we can add, including stuff like broken windows and such. So. Yeah, let's get into it. See, tank treads would be awesome, but uh, I'm not I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> that would be a fun project, though. Our first piece of kit is going to be this luggage rack, although I need to quickly raise it up now. <laughs> it's a little bit too low uh, for us to be able to see its bottom bars, but there you go. Uh, luggage rack is on. That's very, very important. Something else that we could potentially add is a turret. 
I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but uh, we shall see. <laughs> Next thing though, you gotta have a way to get up there, so it's gonna need a ladder. Yes, <laughs> just one of these right on the back hatch. Makes it a little bit difficult to open the hatch, but it's okay. All we need to do is get up there. So far, it's just off-road spec, but I have some other ideas, uh, including making it look a little bit more aggressive with a shaker hood. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't see why not. Tubular rock sliders are extremely important uh, because it needs, well, not necessarily rock sliders, but things to get into it. Uh, steps is what I'm now calling this. <laughs> I have a couple more options, but I'm kind of feeling these ones here. That angle upwards is just too cool to pass up. I'm just going to quickly add in a skid plate. Uh, I know that uh, <laughs> the game won't show the one I added in, so this is what we got to do to fit that in there nicely. And oh yes, <laughs> skid plates are awesome. In the bumper section, we should be able to find a uh, front bumper for us. These ones here, these criminal ones, I've never really been a fan. Um, <laughs> but there's got to be something else. Maybe one of these nudge bars. I kind of want it to be a bit more aggressive than that, so we might have to make something. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a combination between uh, Baby's first bull bar and uh, another piece that I found that I think makes a decent amount of sense, which is this one right here. Um, and then, obviously we have lights up top. We need lights down here as well. Alright, that's looking a little bit more off-roady. Uh, again, a, a decent thing, but not quite the right thing. Um, <laughs> So what does it take to make it look military if we have the off-road stuff sort of set? Uh, now it's time for combat. So there are guns in this, um, <laughs> but I don't really see much of a point for them, at least not here. Okay, so <laughs> other than the crate that I've added here, nothing else has changed, but I've been thinking about what it means to be military ready in terms of a vehicle. Other than being the uh, the lowest bidder <laughs> that gets assigned to build it, um, what does it mean for something to be military spec? And generally it means, again from my non-military perspective, that uh, it has to be something that's useful for the army. It's something that uh, serves a purpose within the greater scheme of operations and uh, in this case I have no clue what this would be. It's like a troop transporter but at the same time, more like a desert runner, maybe. Uh, it's fantasy, so I can't exactly apply it to real life. But I was thinking of a few things that could be useful, and one of them was blocking off all the unnecessary windows so that they can't be shot through, especially this large back one. Uh, it just kind of seems like that would be dangerous for them, so I'm going to cover that stuff up. So what this now looks like is some crude coverings of the back window, and obviously the back wiper is not exactly needed anymore, uh, <laughs> but now it's uh, mildly safer, I guess? Yeah, now let's make it look battle-worn because I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> there we go. I think that's it. It's the light uh, off-road transporter uh, with three rows and a giant crate on the top, but uh, in in a pinch, uh, <laughs> maybe this is what they take. War Wagon is finished, at least in terms of the design. Definitely let me know what other ideas you have for War Wagon bits, because this doesn't have to be the end. We can definitely do more with this in the future. On to the drivetrain. Uh, so it's going to be rear wheel drive. Automatic with a 3-speed as I had mentioned before still thinks it can do 224 So we'll have to come back to that I guess and see uh, Spacing at 50 come back to that manual locker Up in the old tire department. We have chunky off-roads as I mentioned before We'll tune this a little bit, but I want to keep the widest ones I can on the rear just because it looks cool <laughs> I really wish I could lower the front independently from the back because having a higher back on this car would just be sweet Brakes have just gone for uh, solid discs. Let me see what's going on here. They're gonna need to be bigger Oh my goodness, they're gonna need to be a lot bigger uh, Yeah, that's not gonna do it <laughs> It's not gonna stop, uh, but that's all I can do <laughs> Maybe race brakes yeah, maybe race brakes. Aerodynamically, I just gave it an off-road skid tray. That's literally all it needs. Interior-wise, 
triple rows, all benches, because yes, that makes total sense. Standard, basic AM stuff, nothing fancy. On to uh, this stuff here. Um, well, we need power steering, just otherwise it'll give us a terrible warning. No traction aids, so it's going to be slippery. And uh, safety, let's do standard 50s, no, standard 60s safety. There you go. Suspension, I've kind of already set. Uh, I'm using an off-road preset, but I'm going to change that for a normal one uh, just to make it a little bit stronger. And it is as low as it'll go, by the way. Uh, if we want to see what it looks like tall, that is the height restriction up top. She giant if you want it. Back over to the graphs, uh, let's see, so it says 214. Apparently that's, um, well, 217 is probably as high as we're going to get today. Uh, which is fine. 2% wheel spin, uh, that's not a big deal at all. And then, <laughs> what's that? 45.4 liters per 100 kilometers? Hmm, chef's kiss on that fuel economy. I went ahead and upped the spacing to 70 just to give it a little bit better acceleration. Uh, and that's probably going to screw with our top speed a little bit, but not much. Wheel spin up a little bit, not a big deal. No quality sliders on this thing, so not uh, too much to worry about. Overall though, that's not bad considering I didn't even check the tune on these uh, and we can get those fronts just a little bit bigger. Not terrible actually, it's not terrible overall. I think it'll definitely be a driver. Whether or not it's going to be a good driver is uh, yet to be seen, but the war wagon is ready for its first mission in BeamNG. Stick around. All right, so here's the war wagon in BeamNG, and uh, I noticed something. The, re the reverse lights actually light up the front uh, bar headlights, which was a mistake on my part. I probably should have realized that that was a thing. Um, yeah, I totally forgot that you can get out of the car in BeamNG. It's been a while since I played this game, but anyway, don't worry about it. We don't really need that feature at the moment. I think the only things that have gone wrong are the uh, crate turned white, which is to be expected, and uh, we have a bit of a challenger over there, something that may or may not compete with this wagon of war. But first, let's take this on a bit of a shakedown. I brought it to a proving grounds. Let's just pretend that this is a military proving grounds. Why am I thinking of this in terms of the military when it's very obviously not ever going to meet their specifications? Don't question it just go with it all right <laughs> that is the way of things and uh this is actually my first time driving it it's slow as heck um it's only got three speeds so we're technically i think we just shifted into second gear uh yeah goodness it's, it's gonna be a while before we get up to top speed 150 is not necessarily slow but it's not exactly fast if you know what i'm saying okay that's a good way to drown ourselves Although it actually lived through it. <laughs> Surprising, the war wagon lives on. The wheels on the back are so wide that it refuses to drift, and the gearing is far too long for it to really get out of control, so I feel like in that way I've been uh, at least mildly successful. Now I want to see what it'll do on uh, one of these little jump pieces here. I know that these are not necessarily supposed to be jumps, but they could be if you're going fast enough. So here are some rocks that we could potentially take on. Uh, I'm just going to quickly lock the back diff because I feel like we're going to need it. And let's take it slow, not taking it too quick just yet. We'll use that torquey V8. Uh, we lost our front bar almost immediately. Uh, see what I mean about that being baby's first bull bar. Um, but, I mean, no crawler gear, uh, although we do have low. Come on. Come on. Ah. Oh. Dang this thing, <laughs> so close. Maybe it's just my line, all right? Maybe I'm just taking a bad line. Just getting up to the tip top of the angle and we're having issues. But I mean, it made it this far and considering what it is, that's not bad. Well, I managed to free myself without resetting, so I'm gonna consider that to be a bonus. And I just wanna try going a little bit quicker and see how it does in terms of survival. It is basically a truck underneath with a wagon body on top. And we made it up to 40 degrees. All right. Well, at least we have a bit of a benchmark. Now let me show you the competition. 
Let's say it's another government bidder, perhaps. This is a Crown Victoria-esque vehicle that I made a long time ago. For some reason, it's been turned gray, but it used to be black. Uh, and I guess that's just the light. Um, this one has unknown amount of power. I have no idea. Uh, but it looks like it's just rear wheel drive, unless it's four wheel drive and I'm not noticing. Yeah, just rear wheel drive. Another big si saloon car, I was gonna say, but it's basically just a large sedan, uh, which is fine. This one probably, well, <laughs> I suspect it's gonna be better just because it's potentially more powerful. Uh, I have a video that's out on the channel for this thing, but uh, it's more of just a a highlights thing because <laughs> I had issues in my initial recording many many moons ago at this point but let's take it up this thing and see what it'll do uh, nice and slow now let's go okay not bad the same bull bars on the front of this one and it left almost immediately uh, let me try oh it has sport gears <laughs> maybe this thing's got a dual clutch that's very awkward um, but it doesn't have the ground clearance that our friend over there has, and I think that's going to be its downfall. Yeah, that's about as good as it'll do. Um, <laughs> I gotta say, though, that this thing is wicked quick. Uh, so maybe that'll be a bonus in its government contract, just speed and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Let me try and get it up the slope. So in a similar vein to what we did before, I'm gonna start up here turn myself around and uh, go on up and also down. Uh, down first, then up. Oh wow, this is rickety. Come on, give it the juice. It's not doing as well as the other one, that's for sure. And uh, maybe 25% there, or uh, not much of a grade. <laughs> Overall, yeah, not ideal. Definitely got a bit of a rampage front end, but uh, the machine gun on top can't be helping. Okay, just for fun, I'm going to burn out my way up this uh, potential <laughs> drag strip piece. Oh, man, that sucks. <laughs> okay, enough with this car. It's kind of crappy. Let's go on to the cool stuff. All right, so more trials and tribulations await the war wagon of death, because that's what I'm calling it now. Everything needs to have of death at the end of it if, if it's going to be menacing and uh, evil like rabbit of death and then all of a sudden you know <laughs> it's not to be messed with monty python style and would you look at that well i've just noticed something about the car I, apparently my fixture placements were not ideal because there is a piece that i attempted to use underneath it <laughs> just consider that to be a bit of an easter egg at this point because uh I'm gonna forget I put that there. All right, War Wagon of Death, it's time to test you in a more practical fashion. How do you withstand uh, impacts, <laughs> specifically ones from a, uh, well, driving perspective? Let's see what we can do in terms of just randomly crashing into a post at 170 kilometers an hour, and, okay, I think everybody died. <laughs> Advanced safety, my butt, that's not gonna work. Now, what if we have the war wagon lined up over there and we're in an equally devastating military vehicle driving at what will be a staggering 150 ish, possibly more, definitely more kilometers an hour? What is gonna happen to the war wagon? Uh, Decent amount of devastation, actually. <laughs> Not as bad as I thought. It was a hit a little bit higher up on the chassis than I imagined it. But uh, the engine still works, so it's doing its part. And if you look at this car over here, it's still pegged and uh, apparently doing uh, a little bit more <laughs> damage than I had anticipated. It's overheating like mad, and I feel like I'm just going to leave it there and see what happens. Ah, uh, never mind, the torque was reduced. Well... It's probably toast. Literally. Well, as we watch our devastated neighbor uh, destroy itself slowly by doing laps. <laughs> oh, that's just so sad. Um, let's try out some different environments and see what it does. How does it go in sand, as an example? Uh, again, diffs are locked, so uh, we're giving it as much of an advantage as it can get, and that's not too bad. Mud, not particularly deep mud, mind you, but mud indeed. 
not bad either. Uh, what is this? <laughs> Maybe driven upon sand? Not totally sure. And an attack from above, but we didn't get hit by that. Obviously ice is another option. Although I don't really feel like this is an ice mobile. However, uh, it's got zero traction on ice, let's be real. It's gonna need chains and probably even tracks to get through this. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm reasonably impressed with this. Uh, it's better than the old one, that's for sure. Which you can still see is slowly looping around, sadly, on its own. Putting out blue smoke as it does. Um, <laughs> I'd say the government contract's getting awarded to the war wagon of death over the crown vic of less death. But still some death. And maybe only its own. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments below. And uh, yeah, let me know what you thought of the war wagon and its uh, devastating abilities of death. Uh, <laughs> and what you would do for your own war wagon so that it doesn't end up as horrible as mine. Except the engine, because apparently it literally is bulletproof. The thing is still running, even after that absolute devastation that we just ran into. <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid to check out my website, automotiveflux.com, for Bugo stickers. Uh, I'm serious, <laughs> I will ship those to you as soon as I can, so they will get there before any sort of holidays. And uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody who's bought one so far. And yeah, check out my Discord, check out my Twitter, Instagram. I am on a lot of different social medias. I don't really talk about it too much, but uh, yeah, I exist elsewhere. Not just here, but mostly here. Oh yeah, second channel. Uh, <laughs> doing real build stuff on there instead of just this. Check me out at Bright Hill. We conclude with a disastrous crash and one last checkup on our devastated beast. Is it dead? No, it is still going. I am shocked. I think I'm gonna give it a break. All right, we'll consider that dead enough for now. Just wanted to give a big thank you to those who have chosen to support this channel, specifically Overlord QT Bear, Terry Williams, uh, GA Pope, Davis Hester, the German dude, Mickey K1, Sleep64, Childish Sin, Jug, Antisocial, and Jared. I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, all 19 of you guys, supporters and advanced combined, I appreciate you guys sticking around despite my absence for the past two weeks and maybe my lack of decent content for the past month and a bit. Um, but yeah, trying to turn that around for you and for me. I'll see you again next time.